Hey, what's up guys? This is JT. Welcome back to Bodyweight Strength. Welcome to the backyard and welcome to my table of seafood. Um, what I'm doing in this video is talking about a specific issue that I think could potentially be significant with regards to seafood. And um, if you follow my channel, you know that I strongly believe in animal-based nutrition. Um, but regardless, from a training perspective, I want to help people no matter how they choose to eat. But because I feel strongly that animal-based nutrition is, is the best possible foundation for someone for health and for athletic purposes. Um, I do talk about that on this channel as you've probably seen if you've followed me for any amount of time. And most people who eat animal foods uh, eat ruminant based, red meat based foods um, as a large percentage of their diet. But um, I think that we could benefit, and I've talked about this in the past, from incorporating fatty fish and seafood um, specifically for the EPA and DHA that are found in fatty fish or in shellfish and uh, mussels and different things like that. Although I don't eat mussels anymore, I had a bad experience that I won't talk about because I don't want to gross anybody out, but it was up half the night throwing up everywhere. It was super gross. So I have a gag reflex to mussels now. I can't eat them. With that being said, um, outside of EPA and DHA, those, those marine omega-3s that I think are very beneficial to human health for a variety of reasons that I can dig into later if you guys want more detail on that. Um, I like salmon for and its cousins, trout and all the other um, red colored fish basically for astaxanthin. Um, and also that's found in shrimp and, and other seafood that you see uh, that tend to turn red. It's a carotenoid that has health benefits and there's some studies or some research to suggest it might be good for body composition, for endurance, um, to help further your athletic pursuits. So I'll put together some more content on potentials with astaxanthin. And, um, but to cut to the chase on that, if you, eat, if you wanna target the amount of astaxanthin that supplementally provides benefits, uh, then you would wanna eat five ounces of salmon a day. An average salmon, if you eat five ounces a day, on average, it doesn't have to be every single day you eat five ounces, but if you eat five ounces a day, you're gonna get enough astaxanthin to provide the benefits found in supplementation with astaxanthin, but you're getting it from whole food. Now, with that being said, that's not what this video is about, but I wanted to throw that out there um, so that you've already got the actionable before I make the detailed content on astaxanthin. The reason for this video is I want to talk about a common additive to seafood called sodium tripolyphosphate or STPP, I believe, um, or <clears throat> sodium pentophosphate. There's like four or five different names for it. Um, you'll find it. It's on the back of this package, and they list it, at, list it as sodium tripolyphosphate and it'll say to retain moisture um, one of the things that's negative about this is that so this is an industrial additive that is used to manufacture uh, soaps detergents industrial different industrial applications it's used in fracking and drilling um, oil wells so it's got a lot of industrial applications and it finds its way into our food supply and what it does is it helps food retain moisture and when it's put into seafood, it can increase the weight by the, that sucking in of water to make the fish more plump and more moist. And so you are buying seafood that is less seafood and more hydration, essentially, um, than what you really should be paying for. So in the back of my mind, I can't help but think that it's mostly done as a form of douchebaggery to, to get more of our money while giving us less product. But outside of that, um, the main thing is that this is a suspected neurotoxin and dose makes poison. So I don't think eating a little bit of this periodically is going to have any negative effects, right? But it's in a majority of the frozen seafood in almost all shrimp that I have found. It's in almost all frozen salmon. It's in a ton of frozen fish and it helps preserve the fish. And again, as I mentioned, retain moisture, it's plumper. And after you cook it, it's not as dry. So it's moister. Um, or more moist, however you wanna, wanna word it. Um, but because I think that including more fatty fish, more salmon, more red fish in your diet can yield positive health outcomes or, or you know, make your diet more well-rounded, um, I think that it could potentially be an issue along the lines of, so a lot of people go out of their way to buy grass-fed beef. They want high quality foods. Okay, then when buying seafood, a lot of times people are buying seafood containing this ingredient and not realizing what they're getting. So um, I've been looking in and trying to find studies on this ingredient to kind of 
form a better opinion on just if it really is an issue, how, how comfortable do I feel with it? And right off the bat, I believe in kind of applying ancestral principles to food. So the less artificial crap in my food, the better. I'd rather it not be in there, straight up. Um, but if I go out to eat once in a while and I happen to order shrimp and steak and it's in there, I'm just not that big of a deal. Um, or in a, in a piece of salmon eating some, some you know, cheese shelled fish tacos out somewhere, I'm not that worried about it. But when I'm buying seafood for my house, I've been starting to really pay attention and only buying seafood that does not contain this to include when I buy salmon, wild caught salmon, um, at the butcher counter, I ask if this stuff is in there because it is found in a lot of wild salmon. More commonly the frozen prepackaged salmon. Um, this is mahi-mahi, not salmon, but it's not in there. When you look at the ingredients, the ingredients straight say mahi-mahi, no sodium tripolyphosphate. And this salmon, this is literally one of the only salmons I have found that's frozen portions that does not contain that ingredient. And I picked this up at Aldi's. Um, this was $4 for a pound of boneless, skinless seasoned portions. I'm not eating salmon skin. I know some of you crazy nose to tell people, and I eat liver, I'll eat some organs, but I just can't do salmon skin. But if you're super hardcore nose to tell and you eat the whole salmon, then yeah, they also have this with salmon skin. And you can totally get that for the same price, but my wife won't eat it at all with salmon skin. I much prefer it without the salmon skin. So anyways, that that's what I found in wild caught salmon that does not have STPP in it. Um, so if you're looking for a good deal on a price per pound basis on frozen salmon, that's what I have found. I have not found a good deal on frozen shrimp that does not contain it, but I wanted to illustrate what it is. Um, and I'll maybe clip in at the end of this video, I'll clip a label that contains it and I'll put it up at the end of the video if you want to see it. So um, be careful when you're buying shrimp if you're worried at all about this ingredient. Um, when you're buying white fish, it doesn't seem to be as prevalent for whatever reason as it is in your, your salmon and their cousins. So that's what I've got right now on this ingredient. Um, on, the, on what I found so far in studies, it has been shown in dogs and in rats to irritate the mucosal lining and cause digestive issues. The doses are high that they use in this stuff. Um, same thing with the suspected neurotoxic effects. So the negative effects they have found in animals are at a fairly high dose if you extrapolated that to humans. But the problem with that is nobody's checking how much of this stuff is in your fish. So there's, I don't know how much they're supposed to use or what the dose is supposed to be. But for what I'm researching, it's fairly common to use a lot more than you're supposed to, to draw more moisture into the fish and to give you a better weight when you're selling those fish at market. Um, so I suspect that it could be more inside the food than there should be. And if you're eating seafood regularly that contains this, then while having a bolus or something, so having a big acute dose of something could cause some toxic effects, having a drip of something day after day or on a regular basis, chronically, can also cause deleterious effects, right? Um, so I don't have enough information in this video to go sound the alarm. I'm not trying to like make this out to be some giant thing, because I don't know how big of a thing it really is yet, but it's potentially a big enough thing for me to not want to eat it. Um, so that, that was kind of my purpose for this video is just to let you know when you're out shopping for seafood, be on the lookout for that ingredient. And as I'm able to dig and find some better information, I don't know if I'm gonna have to reach out to some experts in this area um, because there's just not a lot of information available other than it has been shown to be toxic in animals. It's an industrial chemical additive. It's used to make all kinds of soaps and, and different things like that, detergents. Um, I personally don't like crap like that in my food, and I find it disconcerting that our governing bodies um, approve these things as food additives based on not a lot of data, because I I'm looking everywhere trying to find studies on animals or humans, which don't exist at all on this, but I'm trying to find studies showing like, hey, this is indeed safe. And th those studies, ha you would think, have to have been done, because if you can't show something it is safe, you would think it wouldn't get approved for use in food. Um, but this this food item has a, a safety data sheet at MSDS, um, as, as a lot of highly, highly processed food ingredients do. Um, so it's one of those things where I don't want it in my food. I'm, I'm figuring most of you probably don't want it in your food. So hopefully this helps you be on the lookout for that. If you feel it's an issue, cool, avoid it. If you don't feel like it's an issue, have at it, eat as much as you want. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. 
I'm just trying to help pass on what I learn, educate you guys. That's gonna be it for this video. Um, hopefully you learned something. If you have questions about this, I'm gonna to continue to dig for more information. So ask in the comments below and I will answer with any updated information that I find. And once I get something really good um, where I feel comfortable with it on this issue, then I'll shoot a follow-up video to this. That's gonna be it for now. Thank you for bearing with me and thanks for supporting Bodyweight Strength.